I think it's made an amazing difference. It's definitely speeded up discharge. I think when we talk of acute wars because of how busy they are, they 100% do not understand how complicated a discharge can be. They don't think of all the um, little elements for a patient. So like they're waiting telecare, so that has to be in place before someone can go home. They're waiting um, a rail just to even access the house. How important those little things are to the discharge. Wards don't grasp the complexity of a discharge. But since we've had um, you know, your colleagues involved, uh, there's suddenly, oh, so there is a little angel in place who's going to help me sort out those things to make that speedy discharge. So I think they've been God-given to us, I really do. They've made a massive difference. We're more in a routine now of saying, right, okay, well, can care and repair help because we're used to seeing the face and, and it does help with those relationships moving forward with, with plans, whereas sometimes you do end up sort of, if you don't use them for a little while, you do sort of tend to forget mm. and then someone will mention it and you'll go, oh, why have, you know, why haven't I thought of that? Um, mm. But, yeah, they, it, that's definitely helpful, just having that face there and, and having you back and forth to the hospital, you know. Yeah, you don't, if they're in the office, it's, as you think of something, you can have a chat with someone, run it past them, see if it is appropriate and troubleshoot, see if there is a way to sort out an alternative, can this be done? When you have to phone somebody, if they're not at the other end of the phone, then and there, to answer, well then that phone call can be put off, put off, just because of workload, and it never takes place, so it is more efficient having somebody there to bounce off of. They become part of the team then, and you automatically think of them when you are planning your discharges. definitely a worthwhile service and it gives that continuation of care where people feel safe to go home and if we can put in those safer measures for someone going home and making sure they're 100% safe it'll stop additional falls or readmissions like it's like preventative management of it it's making people safer for longer term rather than just looking oh they're okay they can they can go home now whereas you see that whole bigger picture of their home environment and things like that I think that's really important. So the benefits work really well is the getting we've suddenly identified that a patient can be able to be discharged that day, they're medically fit, but they can't go home without rails in and those rails have been contacted, Danny, and they've been in that afternoon and we've facilitated a discharge the same day. So that saved thousands on costs of somebody staying overnight in beds and nursing care and 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 it's improved patients' well being as well. How can I pour it? There's no um, walls up or anything. It's like, okay, let's sit down, let's discuss the situation, let's discuss the need. And then it's just a case of rolling with it. And like I say, in one of the instances, within a space of 10 days, everything was done and, and sorted, where that would have probably taken me a month, two months to do without care and repair. So we're having that feedback almost instantly. We're getting more of a grip on the timescales, when things are going to be happening. A home visit for an acute occupational therapist can take an hour out of its time between the journey, the time they assess, coming back, the paperwork and all of that. You know, that, that time could be spent seeing two or three other people assisting with their discharge. We're constantly under pressure. We have to prioritise our time and working much better as a team, utilising the resources and the knowledge that are already out there, not duplicating. Well, it's a no-brainer, isn't it? It's going to just benefit everyone. Previously, we, it, we were aware of it, but it was, it was a vague concept. We had an idea what, what was being offered, whereas now we can say far more specifically well, you know, what, what uh, service you can provide. And for us, having care and repair involved at an early point means that we can identify to you guys where there are issues and we can try and find ways of getting around it, not always easily, but at least we're addressing needs early on in the process rather than waiting for the very end uh, period when we're ready to discharge and suddenly someone comes along and says oh we can't discharge Mrs. Mrs. M because we uh, 
once she's in the flat or once she's in a property, that she's stuck there and she has no one else to support her. So. To give you another example, I had a lady um, on one of the medical wards who her daughter was quite, quite reluctant for her to go home. There were issues about um, about her house was damp, and I think I referred to care repair just to to go and have a look, basically. And I think they they had a surveyor or somebody who went to have a look. We had a, a good um, comprehensive written report of the state of the house. The she couldn't go back there. Um, it was full of mould. You know, we had re these little little reports from the daughters. A bit, there's a bit of mould here. The OT had only gone to the downstairs, but when he'd gone upstairs, apparently it was completely black. The whole place was black, so she couldn't go back there, even though she wanted to. And it was always she, the, her did, her discharge was always delayed a little bit because it was she wanted to go back home, but there were these little anecdotes that were little comments it's not fit for purpose but it was only when we got the actual written report um, that we said you were able to say to her look it's like this it's going to take some time to put right but in the meantime we can get you you know put you into temporary accommodation which we did and she went the next week Uh, we had a referral from the stroke unit, so it was picked up on the board round. He would been fitting well before the stroke, so he was working full time. A severe stroke had come out of the blue. He'd been in hospital for about three months, um, was ready for discharge. Because of the severity of his stroke, he couldn't go home to his own property, so he had to move in with um, some family. So he was going to sleep downstairs in the family's living room. But it was just the simple thing of there was no bed. It was only a sofa in the living room, obviously. Family didn't have any funds to buy a bed. They were really struggling. Um, so it was just that simple measure of buying a bed, which I think was about £260. We bought it from Argos. Um, it, it was delivered within about two days and he could go home. So although it wasn't, you know, a really complicated job, it was actually something really simple that we could get done really quickly and it meant he could go home. To me, that is a powerful story because he would have been there at least another two or three weeks. I know that for the OTs to find the funding for a bed. We often get referrals for patients who haven't got functional needs that would meet the criteria for occupational therapy, but we get pulled in because it's social issues that none of the other professions know how to deal with. And we seem to be the people who access the services appropriately to facilitate those discharges. But now we've it's opened a whole new world, really, because we've got access to more stuff that we didn't know that we could access. It's been invaluable. I think it's made a difference to our capacity to see patients quicker on the ward and getting patients out more quickly as well. I think it does assist with patient flow, especially when the reasons for patients not being discharged are around the home environment and are things that traditionally occupational therapy wouldn't do. So not, not so much the equipment because we've always been able to access the equipment, but more of like issues with heating and boilers, issues with windows, issues with carpets or damp, that type of thing, is that that can now be addressed by care and repair. So it means less of our time and you've got access to services and facilities to solve those issues. But also, when patients go home, because those issues have been resolved, I think it improves their health and well-being, so they're less likely to come back in. There are a whole host of services available that probably that we haven't tapped into in the past, um, mm. and that we are very much looking forward to tapping into um, moving forward um, to support us in in making people's lives a little bit easier, to support people in achieving their outcomes and ultimately support people living independently in their own homes as much as possible. And I think we have come to the realisation that people's homes and their environments are absolutely mm -hmm. key in supporting and maintaining people in their own homes. It's so beneficial having somebody on site that there might be questions Kelly wants to ask us and we can just do it there and there rather than telephone calls back and forth just save so much time you know and, and the person might be really wanting to go home. 
and it was really good to have her as a liaise person between all the services because there wasn't any family with this particular man so it was we would have had to liaise directly with social services through everything but now having Kelly is sort of that person to help coordinate things it's taken a lot of time off of us that we're then able to see other patients but I think the biggest thing of having the, this healthy home birth with Kelly being in here is the fact that you can get it done before they go home or you can at least start it before they go home because Sometimes then, if you can't get it done until after they've gone home, they've already then fallen again because something's cluttered. All the time they've gone home, they've gone to the, oh, this is my home, this is it, nothing can be done. Whereas if mm. things and something has started, they will, you know, the patients often and people often agree to it more or realise that they can be different. Getting housing stuff done has probably been the most challenge to discharge over time. So perhaps a patient has um, an acute illness, they're on another site, they come here, plus they've had a stroke, they can't go back to their home in its current state. Getting through that process of adaptation we didn't have really good housing links. We tried to do it, but the housing challenges were probably our biggest challenges. So getting care in someone's home is a fairly easy process, but the time it took for adaptations was probably the, the biggest delay in things. Well, if we can get somebody out from the ward, it means that patients can be transferred from the emergency department onto the ward and obviously from the community into the emergency department. So it, without that, there'd be a massive backlog at the front door of patients waiting to be seen in emergency departments and waiting in the emergency department, waiting for a hospital bed on the ward. So without that there to facilitate the discharge, there would be say, a bottleneck at the front door, which obviously is longer waits in hospital and that's not good for patient care or patient experience.